Good evening, everyone. We try to make uh, visitors feel welcome at our parish, so if this is your very first time here at St. Bridget, please stand so we can say hi to you and welcome you to our parish. First timers? I know summer's over, it's harder. All right, so then all you old timers, well, some of you are older than others, and they're not at all as young as me. <laughs> Check your phones and make sure they're turned off or muted or aren't gonna make noises during our mass this evening as we celebrate the 23rd Sunday in Ordinary Time. And we thank you all for being here this evening. Good afternoon and welcome to our 5 p.m. Mass here at St. Bridget, which is also being live streamed. Uh, thank you for your presence. This time, please turn to gather number 744, number 744, and stand and join in singing, Gather Us In.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. We are in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ, who leads us to God the Father in the light of the Holy Spirit. We gather together as children of God, sisters and brothers, children of the same Father. And to prepare ourselves to celebrate God's presence, let us call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, words in what, what I have done and what, what I have failed, failed to do. Through, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask and bless and Mary, ever virgin, virgin, all, all the angels, angels and saints, and, and you, my brothers and sisters, and sisters to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us of our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. O God, by whom we are redeemed and receive adoption, look graciously upon your beloved sons and daughters that those who believe in Christ may receive true freedom and an everlasting inheritance. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated.
A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, Say to those whose hearts are frightened, Be strong, fear not. Here is your God. He comes with vindication, with divine recompense. He comes to save you. Then will the eyes of the blind be open, the ears of the deaf be cleared. Then will the lame leap like a stag. Then the tongue of the mute will sing. Streams will burst forth in the desert and rivers in the steppe. The burning sands will become pools and the thirsty ground springs of water. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. James. My brothers and sisters, show no partiality as you adhere to the faith in our glorious Lord, Jesus Christ. For if a man with gold rings and fine clothes comes into your assembly and the poor person in shabby clothes also comes in, and you pay attention to the one wearing the fine clothes and say, sit here, please, while you say to the poor one, stand there or sit at my feet. Have you not made distinctions among yourselves and become judges? with evil designs. 
Listen, my beloved brothers and sisters. Did not God choose those who are poor in the world to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom that he promised those who love him? The word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Again, Jesus left the district of Tyre and went by way of Sidon to the Sea of Galilee into the district of the Decapolis. And people brought to him a deaf man who had a speech impediment and begged him to lay his hand on him. He took him off by himself, away from the crowd. He put his finger into the man's ears, and spitting, touched his tongue. Then he looked up to heaven, groaned, and said to him, Ephatha, that is, be opened. And immediately the man's ears were opened, his speech impediment was removed, and he spoke plainly. He ordered them not to tell anyone. But the more he ordered them not to, the more they proclaimed it. They were exceedingly astonished and they said, he has done all things well. He makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. The Gospel of the Lord. The advent of salvation is here. Now the, the, the mute can speak, the deaf can hear, the lame can walk, the blind can see. The advent of salvation has come. That's the message of the readings today. And how wonderful life becomes when we are able to hear others, when we are able to Hear even things we don't like to hear, but when those things are coming from somebody who is suffering, somebody who speaks like that because life has not been kind to him or to her. How wonderful is life when we are able to communicate. When we are able to hear even when we don't, we want, we don't want to hear, when we know the truth and we don't have a selective sense of hearing. When we hear the truth and we recognize the truth coming from the voice, through the voice of our sisters and brothers, 
life changes. Then the lame walks. Then we are able to go to, to find Jesus in the nursing homes, in the hospitals, in prison, in many other parts where Jesus is waiting for us to be served. Now, I was talking with Sister Michelle before Mass. She is a missionary. She is coming from Chile. She went from the U.S. to Chile. I came from Mexico to the U.S. And we know, Sister, that when we speak the language of love and charity, everybody can understand. Right, Sister? The language of charity is universal. When you go to the hospital, the nursing homes, and people are dying, or you go to serve the poor, they understand the message clearly. May the Lord open our ears to hear his voice, our eyes to see him in our sisters and brothers. May the Lord move us to walk to find him in the poor, in the needy, in those who need him very much. Come here, Sister Michelle. Yeah. <laughs> she comes with a message every year a missionary visits us. Uh, and the Arsaiz of San Antonio sent Sister Michelle to come here this year, and now she has a message for all of us. Good evening. I want to begin by thanking your pastor, Father Gilberto Vallejo, the Society of the Propagation of the Faith that organizes these mission appeals, the Archbishop of this Archdiocese, Archbishop Gustavo, who allows these mission appeals to happen, and you, the people of St. Bridget Parish, for having me here with you today. As Father said, I'm Sister Michelle. I'm a sister of St. Joseph of Carondelet. Now currently, I live in the San Francisco Bay Area in the city of San Jose. I'm a marriage and family therapist, and I work there directing a counseling agency that primarily serves the uninsured and underserved. But I have come today on behalf of the mission we currently have in Peru. I served in Chile, and I'll tell you about that. But I've come today on behalf of our mission in Peru of the Sisters of St. Joseph. And since I've come about that mission, I'm gonna tell you a little bit now about my experience when I was a missionary. First, a bit about my community, the Sisters of St. Joseph. We were founded in France in the 1600s, long time ago. But in 1836, for the first time, they sent sisters outside of France, and they came here to the US as missionaries and then they spread throughout the country. There are Sisters of St. Joseph all over the place here now. But in 1962, my community decided to send sisters to Peru. And since that time, many have gone and they have ministered in different places and in different ways. They've ministered in health clinics and in schools and in parishes and various social works. And I'm very pleased to say that we now have many Peruvians who have joined us and also become Sisters of St. Joseph. Beginning in 1987, we had a mission in Chile for 25 years. And I had the privilege of serving there as a missionary for nine years. And the story I'm going to tell you today is from my time there in Chile. I primarily lived and ministered in Talca, which is a city in the central farming valley. However, our sisters also lived in a small farming town called Corepto. And every two weeks, I, went, I traveled there to be there a few days to provide counseling to the people in that area. 
sometimes people came to see me from the outlying villages. And there was one woman who came for appointments with me for several months, and she was from an impoverished village, very impoverished, called Estancia, where there was neither running water nor electricity. Besides the difficulties she had of sometimes not even having the basic necessities, she was also struggling with a rather severe depression, which was in part due to her life with her alcoholic, occasionally violent husband. To come to her appointments with me, she would walk through the hills for an hour just to get to the bus stop. And then she would ride the bus for an hour to get to Corepto. And despite her poverty, she always brought me something, maybe a little bit of flour or a few eggs. Chileans are really generous that way. They wouldn't dream of going to see someone without taking them something. But I have to tell you how surprised I was the day that she arrived with a live rooster for me. I knew what a sacrifice that was for her. In the country, roosters, of course, are very valuable. And remember, she had to carry it all that way. But at the same time, I have to admit, at the moment, I wasn't quite sure what to do with the rooster. My priority was to spend time with her, not with the rooster. And so I took it to the house where our sisters were. And they looked at me with that rooster in my arms, and they said to me, well, what do you want us to do with it? And I said to them, I don't know. I need to be with the senora. <laughs> Could you please figure it out? So they did. Eventually, they solved that problem. They took the rooster to the parish secretary. And she did with the rooster what is often done with roosters in country towns. She slaughtered it. And so then, the only thing that remained to me was the lovely memory of the gratitude and generosity of an extraordinary Chilean woman. Now, I just told you a story about my time in Chile, because that's where I was a missionary. But our sisters today continue serving the people in Peru. And there, our sisters continue to serve the very poor. When COVID began, there was a great scarcity of food. And so many Peruvian neighborhoods started making food in common pots so that the people of the neighborhood would have something to eat. Even today, many people still depend on the food from those common pots. And our sisters help to provide the food that they need to make that those meals. And they help to provide food for the other needs of the families. Often the neighbors arrive at the convent asking for money for transportation so their sick family members can get to their medical treatment because their illness makes it impossible for them to use the bus. For those needs, and for other parts of their ministry. Our sisters in Peru rely on the financial help that we get from mission appeals like the one I am doing today. Now, Father just talked about the common language of charity. And today, you have a chance of speaking the common language of charity by being aware of our mission in Peru. You can do that, of course, by praying for the Peruvians and for our missionaries there. But as well, if you are able, you will have the opportunity today to help my community, the Sisters of St. Joseph, 
continue our work in Peru by making a financial contribution. And on behalf of the Sisters of St. Joseph, and most especially on behalf of the people of Peru, I thank you. Please stand. I believe in one God, God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death, was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father, he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life, life of the world, the world to, come. to come. Amen. Amen. You are just, O Lord, and your judgment is right. Hear the prayers of your church and treat your children in accord with your merciful love. For the church, that we bring the good news of freedom and justice in the kingdom of God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For nations throughout the world, that they show no partiality and respect the humanity of all global citizens, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For environmentalists, that we heed their calls to change our human actions to benefit the preservation of the earth and all living creatures, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For those who work in healing professions, that God's restorative grace works through them to cure the sick, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For those who are deaf and hearing impaired, for those unable to speak, and for sign language interpreters who work with them, that they know full welcome in the human community and the church, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers and for the souls of the faithful departed, that they sing the praises of God forever in the liturgy of the kingdom of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. And now we bow our heads and remember the prayers that we hold within the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. O oh God, you embrace us with your love and presence. Help us to help us as we approach the obstacles of this life. Teach us joy and kindness as we face any difficulties. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Two eighty five in the spirit and song hymnals and sing with us Jesus heal me.
my sisters and brothers that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who gave us the gift of true prayer and of peace, graciously grant that through this offering we may do fitting homage to your divine majesty, and by partaking of the sacred mystery, we may be faithfully united in mind and heart. Through Christ our Lord, amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of eternal life. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. May holy, therefore, this gift we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given out for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. 
humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Gustavo Garcia Sayer, our Archbishop, Michael and Gary, his auxiliary bishops, and all the clergy. Father, remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. Father, we pray for all our deceased relatives and friends. And Anna Fam Tian, Mike Dwyer, Emmanuel Gustillo, Pam Bradley, Joe Kopecki. And all who have died in your mercy, Father, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. Father, we also pray for Vera Calderone, who is sick. Luciano S. Ortegón on his birthday. And Catherine Mejia, who is sick. And we pray for the eternal rest of Patricia Kraus. That with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Saint Bridget, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Let us pray the Our Father at our Savior's command and formed by his divine teaching, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses. We forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant us peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace, peace with you. You take a
Behold, this is Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worried that I should enter my room. But only say what The song for Holy Communion is found in spirit and song at number 259, number 259, Ubi Caritas.
is your tickets for the festival barbecue plate in the narthex. They are $12 each. Thank you for your generous support of our parish community. See the table in the narthex to register for the Women's Acts Retreat on September 12th to 15. St. Monica's Circle will be meeting today in the Day Chapel at 10.45 a.m. Please contact Dorothy if you are interested or have any questions. Thank you. Let us pray. Grant that your faithful, O Lord, whom you nourish and endow with life through the food of your word and heavenly sacrament, may so benefit from your beloved Son's great gifts that we may merit an eternal share in his life, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Those who want to make a check for Sisters of St. Joseph, you can do, bring it to the office or bring it to the collection is uh, to the Arzaise of San Antonio and then Sisters of St. Joseph, yeah? Sister will be there at the Nortex with me, and, and if you have questions, we can, we can talk over them. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May your mighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Our closing song is Glory and Praise to Our God. It's found in Gather at number 522, and we'll sing verses 1 and 3 today. <laughs>